football game. It was a hard fought game on both sides, and Tennessee played their hearts out. They came out in the first half and gave us a lot of issues defensively with some different things they did. They game planned us extremely well, in my opinion. They got the ball in the perimeter. We did not tackle very well in the first half. But we really settled down in the red zone. We made stops in the red zone. When you play with good red zone defense, it's going to give you a chance to win ball games. Uh, we made some really good adjustments offensively in the second half, a nine-minute nine minute scoring drive, a six-minute scoring drive. We ran the ball extremely well in the second half against a, a front that's very difficult to move inside. They've got really good inside players, so I'm extremely proud of that with three linemen down. Uh, but, you know, the heart of our football team shows up again, the culture of our, our program, uh, the way those guys continue to fight and willed it out. We bust a coverage on the long pass there at the end. We need to stay in the middle of the field. We don't. The quarterback's able to buy time get the ball down the field, and then we bow up and make a stop down there in the red zone. But we're a beat-up football team. The open week's coming at the right time. Uh, Rico Dowdle's got a fibula fracture exactly like Debo Samuel and KC Crosby. It's uh, absolutely amazing. I've never been around anything like this before. Um, Chad Terrell's got a little bit of a sprained ankle. Other that, We're just really beat up. Zach Bailey probably could have played in an emergency um, today, uh, so he definitely will be up for our next ball game. Corey Helms will definitely be back for our next ball game. Malik Young, we feel like, is going to be back for our next ball game. Terry Goober should be back for our next ball game. I'm uncertain on Chad right now, but I think it's probably just a you know, 10, 10 or 12 day thing. Uh, but Rico will be done you know, for, for an extended time, so I hate that for that young man. It's the first time he's really been healthy these last two weeks, so getting him back was huge for us. But Mon Denson did a fantastic job of stepping in there. AJ made some tough runs. Tyson made some tough runs, so we had some guys step up but again I really you know our guys continue to fight it wasn't always good in the first half uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball just not very crisp in our tackling was a little uh, you know frustrated with that but I think they had about 150 yards in the first quarter they ended up with 250 and probably 80 of us on the last drive so we took over the game in the second half and I'll open up for any questions. What did you tell your guys on the, the last series down there at the goal line what were you telling them the timeouts what were you looking for? Well really more than anything you know you feel we work a lot in the red zone as far as the pick routes and different things. They did a nice job trying to set up on the previous play when they only ran two and a half seconds off the clock on the play, which is the first time I've ever seen that. But um, they did the fake pick and, and worked back outside. Rashad Finn did a fantastic job, and Jamarcus worked himself in phase. And then they ran a pick on the goal line, which everybody does. And Chris Lamont's made a fantastic play to work through it. Stay locked in coverage. We got good pressure on the play, so it was a. But, you know, I think a lot. you credit our players because we work a lot down there. They understand about the things that people are going to do to you down there. You credit our defensive staff, Javaris Robinson, Lance Thompson, Coleman Hutzler, Mike Peterson. Those guys do a fantastic job. Well, what was the defensive adjustment really going into the second quarter? So you guys just really locked down on it. I mean, the, the one stretch played our sideline, I mean, I, I counted six missed tackles at the point of attack. The ball cuts back. I mean, they just circled the defense. I guess it was about a 40-yarder. Uh, John Kelly runs hard. He's a good player. He ran. He made. He ran through jam on their sideline for about a 25-yarder. Um, the quarterback extended a couple plays for him on third down, a couple plays on second down. I mean, there, there was nothing that schematically we looked at and thought, "Wow, we're, we're getting beat here." Uh, they want. We wanted to be a little firmer on our edges because we felt like it was more of an edge run game, and that was really about the only thing we really talked about defensively. Well, what did you guys see in the second half that allowed you to suddenly start running the football? Well, we felt like some of the divide zone stuff really worked well for us as far as you know, dividing the flow. Uh, we cut the ball inside a good bit, and, and we, we made better cuts at the running back position. The RPOs were very effective for us, which I think loosened them up. I do think some of the shots early in the game loosened them up. You know, loosened them up outside to know that, hey, on the first play of the game, we're going to take a shot on them, and we're going to continue to do that. So those are things that we've got to continue to do. But, you know, again, our guys made a – you know, you got to credit Kurt Roper and, and Eric Wolford and Bobby Bentley and Pat Washington and Brian McClendon. Those guys did a fantastic job at halftime. Of not a whole lot was going good at the time. You get a fourth and one stop. They get a field goal really before half, and you go in there and we make some adjustments. And so I was really proud of that, how we responded. Well, it was one of those offensive adjustments to start attacking the edges more so the middle would open up. Yeah, we, we, we did get you know the rocket sweeps and those things. We've got to continue to tour. Ain't no doubt. Well, what about all the big plays on defense for the second week in a row? What's that? All the big plays on defense for the second week. We didn't get any turnovers, did we? No. No, but I mean, sacks. So, so. Oh, yeah, no, no doubt. I mean, we got to get pressure. And, and Gene, I mean, we're having a hard time manufacturing a four man rush. And we had a third down, was a really nice call by T. Rob. He brought field pressure. We got pressure off the edge to track the quarterback down. I do think we did get some good four man rush as far as those things were concerned. He's mostly a one read guy. If it's not there, he's going to pull it and run it. We saw that after the first series. So we needed to be able to leave a rat in the hole in a lot of situations to spy on him. 
Uh, we did that more than we've ever done. So, I mean, there were some things that I thought adjustment-wise we did do a nice job of in the game. But there's no question some momentum plays in the game uh, that we were able to make was really a huge part of that. Will, I know the official called it by the rule, but is it kind of a silly rule that it's not yeah. worth getting get called for no. the phone? We say it's about player safety. You know what? If a player decides he wants to stick his face in there without his helmet on, he's making his own judgment. <laughs> That's what Will Muschamp would do. I'd stick my face in the fire every single time. And why you get penalized that is ridiculous. Mm. Now, if you're soft and you don't want to stick your face in there, that's your decision. But it ought to be the player's decision. It is a dumb rule. Thank you. You said it. I did it. So I just second your opinion. <laughs> Parker White's uh, long field goal. Right. How big was that for, to kind of get that long field goal? And then what about him the rest of the day? Well, I thought he was outstanding. We had a bad snap. And, and I, whether it was able not to get it down, I don't know. Uh, we'll look at that. We've had a couple bad snaps on field, but we've got to work through. Ben's been very consistent, so he's certainly capable. But, you know, I think, you know, when you show confidence in a player, eventually they see it and they take ownership in it. And when you know they have the ability to eventually do the job, you know, that's part of what coaches do. And I had the total confidence in him and all. And, you know, we get all mad when he misses one. This is a long season. And it certainly paid off for us today for him making those kicks. you got to show confidence in players. They're going to make some mistakes. So what now? What mentality and move forward? And that's what our mentality has been with Parker because he has the ability, and so does Alexander. They both have the ability. So we've got to continue to reinforce that. I mean, we, we don't want him to mess it, obviously, but those are things we've got to be able to continue to work, work through and show confidence in the players. If we have confidence, they're going to get the job done. If we feel like they have the ability to do we think in both situations they do. Well, offensively on that last drive, it looked like A.J. really missed a hole right there that probably would have been the first down. Was that on him or just something? I don't know. You know, I, I know the coaches all felt that way, but hey, he made a bunch of nice cuts. So I'm, I like old 25 rolling it up in there. He's going to run it up in there regardless of how much he weighs. What did you guys tell the players on that last time, about four seconds left, and then you see one second left, and you have that cover and you blow two in the time of the kid? No. <laughs> we work a lot of in-the-game situations, and we work in the red zone a bunch. I, you know, it's totally up to our guys in those situations, and, and uh, I got a lot of confidence in our guys in those. You, you see what we did against NC State, another very good offensive football team, and, and then today. But that's all situation. That's all stuff you practice. We practice these things all the time, and they have, you know, you got to give our, our staff credit, but also our players tremendous credit for responding with their backs against the wall. Well, so, taking a win like this and taking it into the bye week just helped really get back. It's a lot better than going in without a loss. The loss, so you know, I, there's no question as far as you know, Butch is a good guy and a good football coach, and we wish him luck. Anything to the fact that you're six and zero against these guys? No, I don't know. You, I, uh, we've had some great games, I know that, and, and uh, you know, so at the end of the day, we've been fortunate, we've made some plays here and there at the end for whatever reason. Uh, but they've got a great program, a historic program. Uh, you look at all the great coaches and great players that have come through here. Uh, they had a great crowd today. It's an awesome place to play. Well, what's well, the after, schedule the, uh, after the Texas A&M game, you talk about hitting the restart or uh, refresh button. Now, after two uh, wins, things are going so well during the bye week. What's going to be your message? Hit the replay button. <laughs> Get healthy. <laughs> yeah, protect our ankles. What is the schedule for the bye week, especially with fall break working in there? Will the guys get a few days off? Yeah, we're gonna, I'm going to give them Sunday and Monday off, and, and we're going to get back after Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and then give them Friday and Saturday and get back in Sunday. And uh, So we need some time right now. We're, we're over halfway through the season. We're, we're, we are, you know, not just from the standpoint of some of the guys we've lost. Long term, we've got a lot of nicks and bruises and some, some guys that need to get healthy in the open week, and we need to be smart what we're doing, preview some opponents we'll face down the road. We got some really good football teams starting with Vanderbilt at Williams, Bryce coming up. So we've got to got to get back, get healthy, get on the road recruiting our coaches. We'll recruit Monday, Thursday, and Friday, so we'll be out a good bet. What has DJ Wanham done over the past two weeks to elevate his game? I, th well, I think I don't know about the last two weeks. I think he's gotten more statistical stuff the last two weeks, but he's been playing really good football for us this year. Yes, yeah, I say he's a steady hand. I know we're gonna get production out of number eight. I don't even I don't blink. I know what kind of production we're going to get out of him. He's a really good football player. He's one of the more intelligent players that I've ever been around as far as just understanding the game and getting the game. And uh, He's got he's a self-starter. I mean, I don't, there's not enough positive things I can really say about him. Coach, did you see your team take any uh, forward steps and being more consistent in any areas? Well, you know, just over the last two weeks, the ability to run the football to me has been huge. And I think the ability to stop the run because really – 
It wasn't being whipped at the point of attack, in my opinion, in the first half. We missed some tackles. We didn't leverage the ball. We did some very correctable things, in, in my opinion, early on that were very disappointing. But we responded in the second half the way we need to as far as stopping the run. When you're in this game, did you feel like it was 2014 again in that 10-9 game? Uh, Bring back yeah, the, 20, uh, the year 2014. I thought you were going to score 2014. I was trying to go through the roll of decks there. There's been a lot of third down since then. so. Um, you know, it was a tight ball game, but I don't really recollect stuff like that. I mean, it's, at the end of the day, we're trying to do the things we need to do to win the game. We thought we could get the first down on the run there there late, and we were really, you know, gashing pretty good, and, and uh, we felt like we could get the first down. We just didn't quite get it. A season high in sacks. A season high in sacks. You mentioned DJ's play. Uh, just what did you see from your key line today? Again, I think that, you know, from the standpoint of being able to win in the one-on-ones, being better at the four-man rush than we were, uh, it's the old saying of uh, we're not where we want to be, but thank God we're not where we were. So we need to continue improving. Is there anything to those fibula injuries? Is it equipment issue or just bad luck? No, I think we just need to drink more milk. <laughs> <laughs> What's allowed y'all to run the ball better? What's allowed y'all to run the ball better these last couple weeks? Well, I just think, you know, we, we've gotten a, five guys gelling together over a three-week period. That have been in there together has not not been a shuffling of the deck. I, I do think the closest two net units on your football team needs to be the offensive line and the secondary. The communication up front is critical. Uh, I think our offensive staff has done a really good job of narrowing down some things that we do extremely well, and we've we've broadened, we've lessened our scope as far as some of the things that we've tried to carry in a game. Our guys have gotten more repetitions in practice at the things we carry into the game, which I think again is a credit to our offensive staff for that. With Tennessee making the quarterback switch midweek, how does preparing for an unheralded guy affect preparation, or does that do that anything at all? Well, you can't put a whole new offense in in a week. So, you know, they ran their basic things, and I and obviously tried to accentuate some of the things that he does well. He does have legs. He does have ability to escape, which he did several times against us today. But you know, those are things you just you you adjust in game as far as some of the things that you're seeing. Would you say that Scott Warner is? He Makes a bunch of plays. He's a really good player. And, uh, he overcomes coaching a lot. <laughs> well, with all the injuries uh, that you have experienced over the season, you know, your second string and third string guys start to show you or give you confidence in them to have them in the game when uh, when it matters the most. Well, if we put them on the, on the field, they better play well. That's kind of our, our deal around here. So I've got a lot of confidence in the depth that we've been able to build. Build, you know, as far as you know, Debo Samuel and Casey Crosby and Bryson Allen Williams. I mean, those are extended injuries, and obviously Rico. But we're going to get you know Zach back. We're going to get Corey back. I mean, those are some injuries that everybody in the country is dealing with stuff like this. Uh, it's been unfortunate where we've been hit with some critical guys like Bebo, like Bryson, like KC. Uh, you know, now Rico or guys that are unfortunately long-term situations. That's that's unfortunate. But the you know the high ankle sprains and getting dinged on the shoulder. I mean, th those things happen. Was there any particular reason you went to AJ as much as you did? I know Rico was hurt, but did you see something that you thought he could do? We're just trying to keep fresh legs in the game. You know, Tyson had gotten some, you know, some bunch of carries uh, right at 11, but they all seemed to be within those two series of the third quarter. So we're trying to get fresh legs. Really proud of Mon Denson came in and did some nice things. Anything else for Coach? Let some players get in. Thanks, sir.